Hello there, Links here, and welcome to Kaleido Stella. I lied, sort of. We are going to do one more ending, okay? Because why not? So basically, with the choices uh, before before the last situation, basically, it all leads to the bad endings. We'll skip those, but. There is one ending I want to see. Okay. Basically, I was unlocking all the CGs and found out. So, and yeah, I read through the other ones. And I did not read through the last one. So let's get to it, shall we? It's worth it, I think. Uh, it's right here. And I'm going to save the Mars this time. Even for, well, it's not necessarily what I want to do, but hey, maybe we can save both. Let's see. She told me to sacrifice another planet to save the Earth. I can make a massive decision like that. Being able to change everything with a few actions. I can't do that anymore. I'm tired of it. I can't turn my back on others just to save Earth anymore. Waving lives to choose who tosses aside. That's just murder. Everyone deserves to live. We all should be standing on even ground. How does the number of people on the planet change that? I can't pink and choose who gets to have a future. I mean, that's... A nice thinking, yeah? I'm done with that. I don't want to do it anymore. I kind of regret there is no choice to save both, but... You know. I guess you can't have everything, right? I take my hand off the lever. Manako-sama. <laughs> my whole world flips upside down. Saving Earth means destroying the place that raised Mira. Changing the flow of things to save Earth means that someone else has to take on our fate. Making the impossible possible means bending the law of reality. The consequences of that outweigh the benefits. How come I didn't even realize something that simple? The regret hits me like a truck. I acted up until now without even thinking. I'm starting to believe that all I've done, that all those sacrifices, every single one, every last one of them might have been a mistake. No, I mean, no, 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 no. All of those choices were correct, okay? Okay? It's just now we are not giving the choice I would like to be given. I want to save both. I'm able to. <laughs> Everything is turning black. My eyesight is swallowed by the dark and my breathes get shallow. I want to stop thinking. I want to, the pain to stop. I can't let myself think. I let my brain go quiet. I'm losing feeling my body. I surrender my consciousness to the dark. Am I? Am I okay with this? I'm floating in the black space. Did I do the wrong thing? All of this was to save Earth. I've sacrificed a lot to get here. And just look where that's got me. Well, I deserve it. Changing my mind halfway through is basically betraying everyone I had to toss aside on the way here. Just because Miras. Just because Miras Mars is going to go and be destroyed. I shouldn't let Earth be blown to dust. I can't. I shouldn't have let myself turn back on myself like that. I should have seen things through to the end. I knew that I was forgetting something important somewhere. I was just pretending not to notice. I let my eyes take in just what's in front of me and thought it was the right thing to do. I wanted to believe what I did was right. I really fooled myself into thinking that I could be a hero that saved the earth. I'm a real idiot. Actually we did save it and right now we are kind of... Uh, let's say move back in time. So one of me is saving the air for the other is saving them. I don't know. Ah, I wish that was true. Meme. 
Am I still the same big brother you loved so much? I couldn't even save my own planet. I did stay on the path I chose to take. Rikoko, I wish I played more games with you. If we were friends in real life from the start, we could have gotten along. We'd be friendly rivals, challenging each other to get even better. Mahori, I really messed things up. The future is now what you wanted to be. I threw your life away to stop the future that's now coming. I shouldn't have went through all of this if this was going to be the result. I'm sorry. I really am. I shouldn't have done what I did. Miss Kujirata, what's going through your mind right now? Your adopted daughter that you raised like your flesh and blood was an enemy of Earth. I can't find the right words. Would the mother still be okay with that? Would she be willing to abandon her own life for her adopted child? Mira, you had me fooled the whole time, huh? What, was that why you got bad body with me? You pretended to help me while really only helping yourself. You told me things that raised me and got me back on my feet. Your courage. Your bright smile. You are telling me that was all a lie? God damn it! Everyone had their own individual futures to look forward to. But I threw it all away by being a weak need in the size of Muron. What was it that I wanted all along? My body got blown to pieces now, I'm just a wandering soul. Oh, right. So this is what the afterlife's like. That's no good. I shouldn't have tried in the first place if things were gonna turn out like this. Everything was for nothing. Sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. Manako. Huh? A voice cuts in. What? I sense someone's hand closing around my wrist. But that shouldn't happen. I don't have a body anymore. Where am I? I open my eyes to see a familiar night sky and meadow roll out before me. Is this one of my memories? A girl sitting beneath that winkling night sky. Her shoulder length hair is fluttering in the air. I take a seat next to her. Acting like usual, she looks up while saying that. She puts on a rough smile, as always, and laughs at me. Mira claps a hand on my back while I stay quiet. This is the memory, right? We never change. Nothing changed since the day we first met. When I open my eyes, I see a familiar face. We cross paths again a week before summer break ends. Her face didn't show joy or sadness back then. Her face didn't show anything. Right now we're at the abandoned planetarium. It's dark here. It's rained up, going back on the mission, the fated place. Am I dreaming? Earth is gone now. It shouldn't even exist, it can't. Ah, just in case, let's save the game. Boop. Hmm. Mira. Ah, that's what I'm doing right now. She talks the way she always does, guiding me to a chair. I listen to her and sit next to her as usual. I don't remember when, but we talked like this once. She gave me courage when I didn't have any, and I got beat up. When was that? My soul's been wandering the dark ever since my body got destroyed. The more time passes, the more I can't remember. What day and more visits? What's the season? How many hours? How many years have passed since I've got destroyed? I can't remember anything! I've been regretting all this time. I'm regretting what I did. That I lost my spine. Regretting that I didn't save the earth. Now, how come this place exists then? I've been yelling at myself all this time, even if I doesn't change anything. All this time, on and on. 
話しておきたいことがある。Mira breaks in with that and starts talking. I was born on Mars. Mars is a barren desert planet and hasn't got much greenery or water to speak of. Mom and dad were soldiers in the army. Martian soldiers live and die to serve the planet. The two of them lost, I mean, like any other soldiers, more or less. Unfortunately. The two of them lost their lives in the service to their home. Wish we didn't have that crap. It was an honorable death, but I was all alone. They left me by myself on a desert planet. People whispered at the funeral, give me a real hard time. Bastard. Their eyes were on me, cold as ice. They all said I was a cursed kid. They thought I was a demon who took their lives. Huh? I was at my lowest during t h e s e lonely days. I couldn't give anyone my trust. I couldn't lead on anyone's shoulder. I just became a sadder and sadder little kid. The only thing that really kept me going was my parents' old talk of a blue planet. They got an UFO once and afterwards told me about a place called Earth. According to them, it was like Mars, but it had way more greenery and water. It had life that wasn't too different from ours, they said. I kept that in mind to keep my heart doing a little dance. When I'm hurting, I dream of it. If I knew that, I can forget about all the pain that's here. I can meet mom and dad on the imaginary blue planet. Dad's big old hand ruffles up my hair. Mom's soft arms wrap around me tight. I can remember those warm memories and time. I can see their smiles like it was yesterday. But real life wasn't so nice. I had no word to say. I spent my days in the alleyway of the beaten path. I didn't have anything to eat. I didn't get warm meals or a bed to sleep in anymore. Course, I didn't. I had to get money to keep on. I didn't have anything I was really good at. I have below average smarts, so my grades were all bad. I'm a clad, so I couldn't do detailed work. The only thing I had going for me was that I was on the athletic side. I was better at using my body than my brain. But that doesn't mean anything to adults. Anyone can do that. But I wouldn't be so sure. I couldn't do anything useful. I don't work, but all I could do was want. It really hit me hard that it ain't easy to live day to day. I didn't get why I was having such a hard time. I gave a side eye to some rich looking parents and their kids passing by. They had fancy clothes and nice hair. They looked real happy. The kid was holding hands with their mom. And how about me? My clothes were roughed up and my hair was a mess. I had no house, no food. I wasn't any different from the garbage on the sidewalk. You know, if you think about it, seems like both Itia and Mira's lives. And I guess also ours as Monaco. Was kinda crap. And not really a happy life. If my parents were still alive and breathing, I wouldn't have had to crawl through the dirt like a worm. I hated the army for taking them away. It was Mars soldiers that stole the happiness I should have had. More and more people looked down on me. It became a natural thing to steal and pickpocket people, but when it drew eyes, it didn't go so well. I was out of options, and I snuck into the army base. I knew that the army always got good food to eat, they had to have some proper rations. I deserved a little bit of what they had. During the night, when everyone was asleep, I snuck past the guards into the base. I didn't know where they kept the food, I combed through the storehouse. s、yes. And that's when I stumbled on a huge hunk of metal. I stopped in my tracks seeing such a gigantic piece of tech. UFO. <laughs> It might have been the UFO my dad talked about, the thing they rode around space with. Could I get to Earth with it? Somehow, I had a feeling that I could. I could get to the blue planet my parents loved so much. The paradise bursting with nature I thought of so often. I got then the UFO straight away. I wanted to get off Mars before anyone caught me. I had to go and fast. If I got to Earth, I had a future waiting for me. It was like my parents said Earth really was a paradise of water and greenery. The carpet of meadows and rolling oceans were the prettiest thing. The air was crisp in my lungs. 
There were so many earthlings, but I want to avoid crossing paths with any. I was careful, hiding and biding my time. I walked the town when not many people were around. It got darker and then it was night. The sky went black so the stars shone through. Maybe I could see it from here. I climbed the man-made mountain of seed pipes and take a look at the sky. Should be took, but okay. What color is Mars from the Earth? Red. I was pleading for hope on an unfamiliar planet. When the owner of El Planeta took me in, I decided to let her take care of me for a while. I got warm meals, beds and baths. Everything I touched had warmth to it. Warmth I hadn't had in ages. I was shook out by the kindness she showed me. I barely smiled since I lost mom and dad, but I started to again during those peaceful days. My eyes heart started to tear. I felt like the hole in my chest was starting to fill up. She says, she's an, uh, um, she says she's an alien. A boy threw a rock at me. Oh my god. The rock hit me in the head and blood started to gush out from the cut. Ew, look at the blood. Gross, go to some other planet. The drops of blood kept coming and stained my clothes and face. Wow, talk about getting the creeps. Get a bit quick. The little girl wanted me dead too. You bet she will kill us if we don't. I was planning on it. I was just telling them who I was. They didn't believe me. I got it. When Earthlings saw me, they only saw an alien. They couldn't be friends with me. I was a real idiot. I thought if I didn't have a place on Mars, I could find one on Earth. I was a kid through and through. I wasn't thinking. Another boy steps in front of me. He just stands there, not saying a thing, with his arms spread out. His knees shook enough that he didn't look the part of protector. I wanted him to stop. I was glad for the support, but it wasn't worth protecting an alien like me. Those kids didn't have any sympathy for anyone. What's with you? You wanna go? See, now the boy had to take the brand of the bullying. In no time flat, the boy got the other crap beat out of him before the police got bored and headed off somewhere else. I sighed and took a peek at the face of the boy in the ground. The boy beat in black and blue flashed me a smile. Like he was proud that he covered for me. I felt ashamed. This weak little dude had more justice in his pinky than I had. He was doing just fine being himself. Was I okay letting things stay the way they are? I was just hiding behind everyone. I was leaning on another person's shoulder without ever trying to stand on my own two feet. There was no damn way I would let myself keep my head in the clouds. Not anymore. I made a decision to fight for my place. I promised the boy to change my weak self and steeled myself to go back to my home planet. I was going to take a good hard look in the mirror, face my people and carve my own role on Mars. I was sure to have handcuffs waiting for me when I went back. I mean, I did steal the whole UFO from the army to boot. No! I was scared, but it didn't mean I'd get tired as one. I had no bars, slows too good, but kids thought I have more clearance. I held on fast to the hope. I had to sell my soul to Mars so I could keep on. Getting the army meant I wouldn't ever have to worry about food again. I'd get warm coats, I'd get more than enough cash. I always hated the army and soldiers for stealing my old life anyway, but that wasn't true. The peace I had back then was because of all the money the army had, it was fortune on a time limit. I only had one road I could go now. I had to live with all I got, wringing out every last drop. I didn't need a home. I just needed to get strong. Enough that everyone would see me for who I am. And ever since becoming a soldier on Mars, I had to do basic training every day till I got ripped. I didn't look too meaty, but I'm miles away from the average girl in terms of muscle. I was moving forward without looking back. Climbed up, up, and up. I had looked stronger, enough to show up everyone who thought I wasn't good enough. My blood, sweat, and tears finally got me to a place where I got trusted with a higher ranked mission. So, 
今よりもいい待遇を受けられるかもしれない I was moving right on up faster than anyone I was sprinting my way to the top but someone else was up there before me higher than I could ever reach I wanted to be as strong as you were so that I could make the stride past you moving forward and never looking back but I got what was coming for not thinking things through and noticed it when someone tried to use me in the wrong way when did I end up losing sight of things was my being born and mom and dad dying old plans I should have known after getting to Mars and not being put on a trial I thought I was lucky no I want to punch myself for that the dirty work got handed to me on a silver platter. The higher ups telling me it was work I could find pride in. The mission shook me at my roots. There is a resistance rising in the meteor impact to Earth in a week, I'm told. And the catch. If the plan succeeds, Mars is gonna take the brand of it. So we couldn't let things go as planned. For Mars, I had to let Earth get blasted to pieces. I had to make the choice. And that meant taking the boy who saved me and gave me courage and hope's future away. I can't believe myself. It's too much. It's way too unlikely to be a fate. Do I choose to fall back on my beliefs or not? I fought on for a while. Malako or my home planet. Moving a trace over I headed inside the UFO. Things were progressing. But then something unexpected happened. The jet fuel cut out sooner than the original plan. Me and the UFO had a crash landing on Earth and I lost my ticket home. You got a handed to the Mars army. They pretend not to know what's going on, but they see it all. My life was in the palm of their hands. I knew that nobody is gonna come fetch me until I complete the mission. I didn't have a choice anymore. I didn't have a home on earth. I ran a finger over my battle scars and steeled myself. それどころか逆に弱くなっていたのかも。お前も悩んでいた。自分のこと、周りのこと、そして救世主として最後はお前に決めてもらおうと思って、俺と同じくして星の無限を背負うものとして。俺が最大の敵となりお前の道に立ちはだかれば、お前なら乗り越えられる。俺を捨てて踏み出すことを選べば、お前はまた前を向いて歩き出せる。そう信じて、似てるよ。俺とお前ってずっと孤独なまんま
せよそうでもしないと俺は止められないぞ Don't do it! We are laughs, her smile the same mischievous one as always The sly trouble making smile I know so well I don't want to do this But I know it's buried underneath everything The memories that were locked away before coming uh, Before comes spilling out I ran away from taking reality as it came using me and Mars as an excuse. I ran away from the world where Meme is dead. I ran away from my disappointed parents and my classmates, from all the judgment. I had no place I could be me except in games. I had little time left to stay in the middle in my little bubble. Without my summer break I'd have to go back to the days of despair. I didn't want to. I wanted things to stay the same. If I was going to have to go back, I wanted the world to end instead. I didn't want tomorrow to come. With no future, I have nothing to worry about. Mahori and the rest of her cult probably thought the same thing. I don't say it, but I really am just like them. I was yet another one of them who just wanted Earth to never see another day. Mom and Dad don't even look me in the eyes anymore. They think I'm a demon child who took Meme away from them. I'm dirt in their eyes. I know that in their minds they believe Mehmet still be here if I was gone. They must really want to give me a good strangling. Do I really deserve to leave even after killing my own sister? Is there anything I can do to make up for Meme dying? I don't think so. Yeah, just throw the knife away and kiss her, god damn it, and get a room! <sighs> if tomorrow comes. As soon as, <laughs> as soon as I step in the classroom, everyone go, will go silent. Because I decided to come to school, they all look at me with judging eyes. Do I really have to bear the brand of that kind of shame? Of course I'm scared. I will not throw up just thinking about having to stay at a place like that for hours and hours. ちっぽけなものかもしれない。それでもこの心に悲しみがないわけじゃない。辛くないわけがない。痛みがなかったことになるってことじゃないよな。けどそれは一瞬のものだ。たった一瞬の痛みなんだよ。その一時的な苦し
let's quickly save. Where is he? Where is she? Huh? Yare yare, did I travel back in time? This is right before I make the life changing decision. I don't feel I was dreaming for. There is no mistaking what I saw. I have to take it all back. I have to make sure Earth sees another day. I made the promise to meet up. I turn the planter's breaker. The old sky boat takes on the light of a billion twinkling little stars. The kaleidoscope of little stars shine down on me. There's got to be more! Please, please. Summer break ends and slowly things go back to the way they were. It's the first day of school since summer break. My feet are heavy while I walk to the class. The realization keeps me while going through the hallways. I'm really going back to school, aren't I? I'll be going to class the same way I always did. The week passed by in flash. Everything that happened felt now new and like an adventure. It was like a dream. I still haven't touched my homework, by the way. Since then, Rico has gone home and taken up job. Miss Kujirata's managing the cafe as always. And Meme? She, she's watching over me. I just know it. The last two, Idi and Mira, are still nowhere to be found. Cut! Damn it. Where'd they go? Why did they say anything? It was just a week, but we did have some good times. Maybe the two of them were stars. They finished what they had to, so they stopped giving off light. But can that really happen? Even after everything, I still have things I can't wrap my head around. I look up and there is a cloud in the sky. Soon enough, somebody will pack up and make room for spring. Wait, what? But the chat to my. What did you just say? For sp For spring. Summer will pack up and make a room for spring. What are you talking about? How? That's not how this works. You get ought to oh, goddamn autumn after what? <laughs> Mind blown, right? Oh my god! Ah! Oh! This awful heat will go in, be replaced by cold wind. I don't know. Maybe in this version of world, spring comes after summer. The future's right, and it doesn't have Idia or Mira in it. That sucks. In this future, Mars is gone, and Earth is here to stay. Ah. The sky is a refreshing blue. That's right. All my hard work paid off. Did it for. I should be happy for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not. But inside I feel empty. I get now. This piece meant walking over the corpses for others. When I get to class, I stop in front of the door. Maybe I can find a way to open the door nonchalantly. I'd be walking the park if I didn't have to struggle with this and just go in. Tanakae Monaco! Or something like this. Right. Even if Mira never really was there with me, what she said is still here in my heart. I'm not scared. I only really care because people say it's weird to be on your own. Being alone is itself isn't scary. Mira's words run through my head as I make a fist. I'm gonna take the next step forward. Underneath a blanket of stars, all alone, she's there. Her hair down suggests above her shoulders. I take a seat next to her. Acting the same as always, her head still to the back as she says that. She flashes that crook smile of hers at me and laughs. <laughs> Mira claps hand on my back while I stay quiet. Okay. 
お前は強い地球を救ったヒーローだ We have the same as always お前にならできるぞ Nothing changed since the day we first met I would like to believe that, you know, he went to that hill or somewhere, or maybe that park they first met. And that's where they met again, right?、Uh, I sure would hope so, that was like that. I think I liked Mira more than Idia. So Idia was an amazing girl as well, but I don't know. Like, sometimes some characters work better for you, right? Man, all three of them, for all three of them, Monaco involved on, in that trio as well, had some really crappy situations for themselves. Really crappy. I mean, as I said, right? Idea was supposed to be basically, yeah, I mean, you, you have to save the earth and then you die. And so on.、Uh, you have the emotions? What? You die. That, that was crazy, by the way. But yeah, she hit the emotion and so on. That was neat. But in the end, she ended up as a, you know, star as well, right? Same as us,、uh, if we chose to save the earth over there. With Mira, I mean, basically saving the Mars, we didn't end up as the star or stardust or whatever, right? But, I mean, he had to live on on the Earth. And,、uh, I mean, Mira was gone. I wonder, I really wonder if maybe we didn't kill her. Maybe they actually did meet on that hill. I so would like that to be the truth. Okay? I would like that. And they then went together to high school and so on. <laughs> no. Maybe that would be a thing. That would be very nice. I wouldn't complain. I wouldn't complain, definitely. But on the long, man, this game was so freaking good. And also, the soundtrack in it is so ridiculously good. It's, it's kind of crazy, crazy. This artwork is moving so slowly, by the way. <laughs> And it's not like there are credits or anything, it's just going super slowly. <laughs> And he. Okay, so they, all of them there. And then Idia observing them all from the distance. For、well, you know what? Maybe no. Maybe I actually like Dia more. I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, as I said, they are both amazing. True end dreams of a red planet. Oh, this is a true end? Oh, okay. And the other one was a happy end. That's true. Okay. I did not expect that, but it was also interesting.、Ooh. She's done what she's promised. That she will go home. Hell yeah! Okay. 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 I love it. I love it. So, she lived. She lived. We didn't kill her. She lived. 
We saved the earth. She decided, yes, I'm sta staying on the earth as well. And she went to her, like, earthly mother. I'm so glad. All right. Let's end the episode here. We'll con uh, We'll not continue. <laughs> uh, we'll play something else. But I don't really know what exactly. So I'll... I might be sticking to mostly Katawa Shoujo at the moment, so if you want to watch it, uh, go watch it. I mean, there has been over 70 episodes at the moment, I think. So there is a lot to see. Yeah, there are 72 episodes at the moment of recording, that's crazy. And now I will continue some more recording of it. So yeah, and afterwards, who knows? I don't really know what I will play next. Anyway, for now, hope you enjoyed, hope you have a... I should be playing Enigma as well. Ugh. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video, hopefully. Bye-bye.